This is Tavares Tate. He is 15 years old. He likes pizza and donuts. He prefers gospel to rap. That he is an ordinary student is the most extraordinary thing about him. That's because he grew up in Eastlake. A century ago, the Eastlake neighborhood pretty much looked like it does today. Country Club Tranquil. Back then, it was a privileged enclave, a country escape for the moneyed. But times changed, Atlanta grew, and the concrete sprawl turned country to city. We'd be out trying to qualify for a national open or something, we'd get a brick or a bottle thrown over the hedge at us, and it, it, it created a few more hazards that we weren't used to. So in 1966, the club's membership sold its number two course, and on the site was built a federal housing project. In short time, East Lake Meadows came to embody all the worst of human warehousing. 60% of the residents were on welfare. Constant gunfire earned it a notorious nickname. They called it Little Vietnam. Police cars would not go into the project unless there were two or three cars at a time. They were outgunned if they went in with just one police car. Most ran from the problem. One man, though, was struck differently. But by the grace of God, I could have been born there. And what would, what would I have done with my life if, if uh, my role models were uh, what was going on there? And so Cousins, one of Atlanta's most successful real estate entrepreneurs, hatched an unusual plan. First, he purchased and restored the East Lake Golf Club itself. Then, he recruited his friends from corporate America to join the historic and polished jewel. The catch, though, was that a hefty portion of the membership fee would go into the East Lake Foundation. Through his friendship with former President Jimmy Carter, Cousins was able to help the foundation gain a federal housing grant. The Meadows was torn down. It's great. How did it never happen? It's great and replaced by a sparkling mixed income community where families on public assistance live shoulder to shoulder with those paying market rates. It's role models. Kid sees a next door neighbor, get up, go to work, keep the trash out of the yard, you know. Where once there was a barren and ruined landscape, there is now a sparkling YMCA, an early learning center, a community golf course, even a grocery store, remarkably something the community never had before. But the centerpiece is the Charles R. Drew Charter School, where lives are changing. My dream is to go to Harvard. That's where I want to go. I want to be the youngest person to win the Nobel Prize in Literature. This school, once I'm even older, I would tell somebody that this school was the answer to all my problems that got me this far in life. A decade ago, the crime rate in this neighborhood was 18 times the national average. That too has changed. We've been involved with over 3,500 kids, not one in jail. There's more than that where I live. Uh, not one kid. And in the end, that is what this Petri dish is all about. Changing the culture. What has sprouted from the rubble of decay is the beautiful music of a successful experiment. It all started with the reclamation of a golf course. Nobody has any idea where eventually it may end. That is beautiful. And although he hates to hear anybody praise him for it, the truth is this is all by the hand of one man, Tom Cousins, with an awful lot of help. And in this day and age, when we talk about people who are sports heroes, that man right there, Tom Cousins, truly fits the bill.